Welcome to www.healthsourcechiro.com. Today's topic, herniated disc pain. In order to understand herniated disc pain, you must first understand the structure of the spine itself. There are three main parts of the spine. The spinal column containing both bones and disc is what most people think of when they think of the spine. But there are also the neural elements, the spinal cord and nerve roots, and the supporting structures, muscles and ligaments. Wear and tear begins somewhere in the mid to late 20s, and the elasticity of the spine begins to degenerate. This degeneration may cause tiny ruptures, which are referred to as herniated discs. The disc ruptures either from degeneration, from aging, or from sudden blunt trauma like an accident. Either way, the herniated disc presses against the spinal cord. This can cause numbness, tingling, an electric-type shock pain, muscle weakness, and sometimes bladder control problems. All these problems can result from a disc pressing against sensitive nerves in the back and spine. Only a licensed doctor or chiropractor can diagnose a herniated disc. It is done through a physical examination of the back and spine. Oftentimes, an MRI and or X-ray will be used to accompany a physical examination and to help determine the extent of the damage. Depending on the severity of the damage, treatment plans for herniated discs vary. Oftentimes, the age of the person, along with physical symptoms and the person's physical activity level, will play a part in how one is treated. Treatment usually begins conservatively with surgery used as a last resort. More aggressive treatment is only offered when symptoms worsen or treatment is not helping. The most common treatment for a herniated disc is rest. Most likely you will be advised to rest the spine muscles to allow the inflammation to go down. You may be asked to take over-the-counter non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications, NSAIDs. These are medications like ibuprofen and Advil. They're used to reduce the swelling, but they can be hard on the stomach. If these don't help with the pain, you may be prescribed oral steroids, narcotic pain medications, or epidural steroid injections. Epidural steroid injections are injections in the spine similar to what women get when having a baby. If you choose steroids or narcotic pain medication, discuss the potential risk and side effects with your doctor. The long-term use of steroids can lead to weight gain and can increase your risk of infection. It can also increase healing times after surgery. Narcotics can become habit-forming and can lead to drug-seeking behavior if used for long periods of time. Physical therapy is a common treatment for a herniated disc. It is often used in conjunction with spinal manipulation. Physical therapy is designed to strengthen your core muscles along with your back. It promotes safe flexibility to prevent future injury. Spinal manipulation, when performed by a licensed chiropractor, gently guides your misaligned discs back into their proper place in the spine. The proper alignment takes the pressure off the nerve and the inflammation is reduced. Progressive rehabilitation combines rehabilitation therapy with chiropractic treatment. This particular combination of chiropractic technology and progressive rehabilitation technology leads to faster stabilization and the pain relief comes much quicker. It can include spinal decompression, which has been shown to provide long-term non-surgical pain relief and cold laser therapy. Cold laser therapy should not be confused with traditional laser surgery as cold laser therapy is a non-surgical procedure. Spinal decompression is also a non-surgical alternative used in progressive rehabilitation to treat herniated disc pain. When the spine is compressed, the disc can be moved slightly, pressing against the nerve and causing pain. Spinal decompression reduces the pain by taking the pressure off the spine. For more information on topics like this, go to www.healthsourcechiro.com.